He called in friendly fire and gave a little bit of cover to run out and rescue his team. On his first attempt to get to Team Sergeant, Captain Davis was shot in the arm and had to turn back. Captain Davis waited for another window and sprinted back out again. But his Team Sergeant was stuck. Captain Davis couldn't fully break him free before he had to return, had, had return to cover. He didn't give up, though. That's not the Green Beret way. For his third time, as enemy fire rained down him, he ran out. Captain Davis freed his team sergeant, threw him over his shoulder, and started carrying up the hill to safety. Captain Davis got about halfway up the hill before a bullet pierced his leg. Then, in front of him, another Green Beret sergeant, who had just arrived to the battle to reinforce the team, was shot in the chest and now needed to be rescued as well. Captain Davis limped up the hill with his team sergeant on his shoulder. He'd been fighting for around 10 hours, but Captain Davis didn't hesitate. He went back down the hill to retrieve the reinforcement who had been just shot in the chest, all 240 pounds of him. Next, Captain Davis ran to his weapon specialist, who was struck in that cesspit. Viet Cong fighters continued to spray gunfire across the field as Captain Davis threw his teammate a rope pulled him out and began to haul him up the hill as well. But this time, the rescue helicopter, by this time, the rescue helicopter had landed. Captain Davis, commander, gave him a direct order, get on board. Davis' response was just as direct. Sir, he said, I'm just not going to leave. I still have an American out there. Unsure if he was still alive, Captain Davis began to plan how he would get his medic. Just the day before, the medic had found out he was the good news. He was a new father. His wife had given birth to the first child. Captain Davis was going to give him a chance to see his baby boy. He pinpointed the medic's position and began crawling toward him, with gunfire and grenades still exploding around him. When he got there, the medic still alive asked him, am I going to die? Am I going to die? Captain Davis tried not before me. Still fending off the Viet Cong assailants, Captain Davis hauled his medic up the hill. And nearly 20 hours, nearly 20 hours later, after that bugle first rang, Captain Davis saved, had saved each one of his fellow Americans, every single one. Just as the story of Paris Davis did not begin in June 18, 1965, it does not end there, either. Captain Davis went on to become Colonel Davis, serving more than 25 years in our military and earning a PhD on top of that. He received the Civil Star, the Bronze Star, the Air Medal, the Purple Heart. And even after he hung up his uniform, the captain continued to serve the community, founding the Metro Herald, a newspaper that focused on his local community and civil rights issues. I wish I could say that this story of Paris' is sacrifice on that day in, 19, in 1965 was fully recognized and rewarded immediately. But sadly, we know they weren't. At the time Captain Davis returned from war, the country was still battling segregation. He returned from Vietnam, Vietnam to experience some of his fellow soldiers crossing the other side of the street when they saw him in America. And although the men who were with him in that June day immediately nominated Captain Davis to receive the Medal of Honor, Somehow, the paper, the paperwork was never processed. Not just once, but twice. But you know what Captain Davis said after learning he would finally receive the Medal of Honor? Quote, America was behind me.